welcome back to The Watch. And this is a message to Matt Walsh as well as The Daily Wire in response to uh, their behavior, basically, and also their attitudes that exist uh, that's in relation and around uh, Matt Walsh's recent video where he covers the Gamergate 2 events as well as the Sweet Baby Inc. controversy. Now, there's no issue that uh, Matt is covering this. In fact, I think it's good. It's the way that he covers it and his attitude towards gaming overall. Matt Walsh doesn't like gaming. In fact, the takeaway that he does say in that video that he feels children should be kept as far away from, he says, these games as possible. The charitable interpretation of that statement was that he was referring to just the woke games, but it really actually sounds like it, when you take the video in context that uh, he thinks kids just shouldn't be playing games at all and that games you know, are, he says, one of the biggest ways children are getting indoctrinated into the woke culture. Paraphrasing, that is effectively what he's saying. And Matt does believe that gaming overall is bad for uh, kids and that it's harmful indeed. This is one of Matt's tweets he said in 2018. I don't think he's changed his views from this. He says, video games are a sacred cow in this country and I'm tired of it. Our country is filled with adults who are obsessed with them. So we must all pretend insanely that there's nothing wrong with or disturbing about a child spending all day killing people in a virtual world. Of course, it's harmful to children. It's harmful to adults, uh, anyone, adults included. Will it automatically make a kid into a mass shooter? No, and nobody in the world has ever made that claim, but it is harming him and we need to face that fact. It has so many issues with it because when he says all day killing people in a virtual world, like I think he's lumping in games like Fortnite into that, which is cartoony, you know, flash, you know, violence akin to the Looney Tunes almost, where uh, there's no blood and anything, but the game, the aim of the game is to kill the opponent. Same as, you know, kids have played for ages. Um, Cops and robbers, cowboys versus Indians, good guys versus bad guys, anything, right? And claiming that that is harmful. So this is his opinion, like gaming is bad um, in Matt's mind. And I want to address that, why gaming isn't bad, as well as addressing the Daily Wise attitude that seems to, uh, I guess, manifest Whenever they, someone kind of calls them out or uh, has an issue with what they say, that's also conservative from their side, that they do something really counterproductive that shoots themselves in the foot. And if they want to avoid losing credibility in this way, losing support and influence by making themselves look really silly, they need to stop doing this. And Matt, you're absolutely guilty of these things. So this is a personal message to you trying to reach out. Um, and look, I don't think Matt will actually watch this video. It'd be nice if he did, but if not, I think the um, points in this video will be instructive and helpful for us to all understand and put into practice ourselves. All right, so first of all, like the whole concept that all gaming is bad and it's bad for children and everything, to me is, uh, is very silly because I don't see people holding many other very equivalent kind of pursuits to the same standard, like being interested in sports or having really any hobby. Reading, okay? Reading is universally seen as a good thing. But why? Okay? It, it improves kind of reading, literature, understanding, stuff like that. There's good things that come from it, but there are really bad books. There are really woke books with heaps of propaganda and ideology injected into them as well. And is because there is woke propaganda in books, should people just stop reading? But it seems like Matt's take is that because gaming can be harmful, that people should just not do it flat, adults included. Which seems hypocritical to when you compare it to other pursuits. Now, of course, gaming can be counterproductive, bad uh, for someone. Anything in it great excess can be bad when it consumes your life, but it doesn't undermine the fact that it can be perfectly fine in moderation, even if it's your main hobby that you enjoy, which people might not see as being in moderation. But there are also huge beneficial things that can come out of enjoying gaming. I think Minecraft is one of the most beneficial kind of uh, games for young people and children because it's like the modern day Lego. There's so many problem solving aspects to Minecraft and e expressions of creativity that it's great for kids, and so I was really happy to see my kids challenge themselves and try and make things in Minecraft, especially using redstone and combining it with trying to make actual device and mechanisms that they get challenged, and it can be really engaging, but also fun and educational for them, right? And there are a lot of benefits that come from this 
in just general game, not just Minecraft, but a lot of games are about tactics and problem solving that do genuinely make people smarter as they get challenged and they have to try and solve problems, right? And I think it'd be really hard just, like, you can get kids to sit down and try and do puzzles, they can be fun, but they have a bit of a, a limit into how long you get to enjoy them, where gaming is, I guess, engaging, problem-solving, challenging, intellectual um, test, almost, right? Uh, training, that can be hugely beneficial. And of course, there are other things about uh, hand-eye coordination, there are social aspects to gaming that can help people socialize, and there are negative ways in the social aspect of gaming, but again, there are positives, so many positives, and to write it all off as completely bad, everyone should be done, is undermining, like, one, it's dismissing, I guess, of uh, so many people's interests and pursuits, okay? And then it's um, undermining the potential benefits that you can get from it, because there are also, uh, like, there's an assumption that Matt seems to have that gaming is now being uh, uh, co-opted and controlled and to spread woke propaganda and therefore kids should just be, get off it completely to avoid it when he does not seem to understand that like the gaming industry is one of the largest kind of pushbacks against the attempt at the woke dominating it than in any other industry there's been greater pushback in the gaming industry against this woke crap with some really high profile disasters for these gaming companies that have adopted the woke esg political kind of agenda stuff. We're talking Saints Row, Forspoken, uh, Suicide Squad, and there's many, many more, right? Where there are independent developers that are actively rejecting woke propaganda. The people who are making Hell Divers, right, have stopped and denied people from posting uh, the LGBT flag and stuff in the game, where they are not allowing any of that into it, and these games are hugely successful, and gamers are supporting them because it doesn't have the propaganda in them. And so to try and just dismiss this entire, you know, uh, um, culture and practice is uh, shooting themselves in the foot in a massive way because that is such a powerful vector of attack to push back against the woke propaganda. And then there's the, that hypocrisy side as well. And the idea that like, you know, if people can't live productive lives while being gaming, it might be an idea that it, it gets in the way of leading productive lives. Um, is so disingenuous. The, the idea that all gamers are just, you know, man children in a, in a retards development and they end up just being in their basement and everything. Okay. Other factors are contributing to that. Okay. Which cause young men to just fall into kind of, you know, their, uh, their world and oh, fine, I'll just sit on my computer, play games all day, everything. Though, and it's an escape for them. And we'll say there isn't addictive elements that can be damaging, okay? But same with so many things. Do you think people didn't watch, spend all day just watching TV and video, sorry, TV and movies and stuff? Same criticisms apply, but I don't see Matt or other people saying you should just stop watching TV and movies completely. And in actual fact, an interest in gaming can lead to great productive pursuits in game development and also 3D modeling and so many other interesting things, right, that come out of a love for gaming. When children are taught to approach this in moderation, but also to understand the correct values, right, and to push back against the actual things that are, you know, causing young men and also women to just check out of society and lose themselves online, right, when you actually push back against those things, Gaming can be a big benefit in their lives and to help lead to productive lives as well. I'm a father of five. I own my own business. I have multiple employees. I'm a very successful, um, best-selling published author, okay? And all these things, uh, not only have I been able to pursue and achieve while being a passionate gamer and nerd, because it's not just games I, I love, movies, TV shows, comic books, okay? tabletop pen and paper role-playing games, Magic the Gathering card games, oh, so many of the nerd stuff. I'm all into that all my life. Look at behind me, right? And I can enjoy all of those while being very productive and raising a very wholesome you know, life, right? With my family and business and being a really productive member of society, working really, really hard, doing all those things because you're never working all the time and everyone has their downtime. Matt, you will have your downtime, okay? Even with all the works and family obligations that you have. Um, 
I understand that. I volunteer for my church as well. I'm an active, you know, member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so all those things, okay? And when you find downtime, you get to choose what you do. And gaming is a perfectly valid escape bit of entertainment that can also be productive as well. And the claim that, you know, if you're just going to be leading a productive, active life, you won't have time for gaming because that's all for kids is nonsense. And whatever, you know, hobby thing that Matt finds time for, you know, that's equivalent, essentially, to playing a video game. It's just like that. And there are, it's funny, like, Matt seems to be enjoy the banjo, I'm assuming, because oh, maybe he doesn't, but he's got a banjo there and there's uh, clips of him playing it, right? Uh, I actually think, you know, certain pursuits in and in just enjoying gaming can be far more productive than just playing the banjo, okay? It can also be far more social, more engaging, more educational, any number of things. And you might be saying, oh, it's such a subset of games that might allow that. No, like a lot of really popular games will allow that as well. Multiplayer games, active games, shooting games, role-playing games. Uh, then there are strategy games, which are huge, okay? Like a whole base-building strategy competitive thing. It's like, mm, I've loved that my whole life. And uh, Civilization, um, also just building games like uh, Sim City or City Skylines and stuff like that. Strategy games that actually teach how like budget fight resources and stuff. These are all really active problem solving things, right? That are more productive, I would say, than playing an instrument, all right? But one side is always given like, oh, that's uh, active, that's wholesome, that's a, that's a mature pursuit, while this is just for children. Can you see the hypocritical double standard that's being applied here, all right? And so this turning up the nose at gaming as this useless pursuit, and even if there's like caveats where you've tried to perhaps acknowledge that, yeah, yeah, gaming can be right in moderation, and everything like that, the general tone that comes out from many of the comments that, Matt, you have said, and the tone that you did in your, even your recent video where people, you might claim, I was defending games, like, no, no, that video, that you did, um, talking about the Sweet Baby Gaming Gate 2, uh, you know, controversy, was framed as a backhanded attack, where you lump all of gaming, you say, like, all of gaming is, uh, you know, being uh, the main contributor, one of the biggest contributors in the world, you know, biggest industry or contributing to children being um, brainwashed, propagandized, and stuff like that, and so many comments, I, we have a video, I've released it just before that, where we go through everything, breaking down the clips, of all these comments where you're giving a backhanded attack to gaming where the video is actually structured still to promote your kind of, you know, um, side goal of attacking gaming as a practice, not defending it. It wasn't a video to defend it, right? And that video, when understood in context, also shows this huge negative attitude you have towards gaming and you actively att are attacking the practice, all right? Encouraging people, children to get as far away from it as possible right without many or any clarifications at the moment right you don't say oh get a i was meaning getting away from the woke gaming you just says get children away from gaming okay um it wasn't getting attention until now not from the mainstream but it's uh, so i can see why people interpret that to mean that you were saying wasn't getting attention until you covered it right it wasn't those clarifications in that video and so when you take look at it in context yeah there is this massively disingenuous negative attitude towards gaming that seems so hypocritical where so many other pursuits don't seem to get nearly as much scrutiny and you get passed off as wholesome valid pursuits of time and good for children when gaming is just this corrupted evil thing when it's actually gaming can be not only huge as i mentioned hugely benefit for children one of the greatest vectors of attack to push back against this woke ideology and it's already happening this whole controversy that's been happening lately the exposing of Sweet Baby Inc. and the other consulting firms, there's a lot more than just Sweet Baby Inc., as well as the agenda that's been getting pushed, right? This Gamergate 2 thing, this whole thing is a result of gamers rising up against the woke crap. And so to attack gamers as this, everyone should stop me playing games or anything like that, is shooting yourself in the foot for this goal of trying to fight against this vile ideology. They're the main community pushing back and winning more than any other community trying to push back and show the mainstream that we don't want any of this nonsense. That's the community that you've been attacking, telling people to just stop playing at all. The solution is not to stop playing games. That just seeds 
this entire industry and pursuit to the left to then continue to use it to push their propagandistic, vile, Marxist, communist ends, right? No joke. Your, your takeaway in the video was to get kids away from gaming. That's ceding it to your enemy. That's just giving up the culture. That's the criticism so many people have had against so many conservatives, right? That do not understand the true importance of pop culture, okay? Movies, TV goes, no, this is nerd culture, right? Just thinking this is all childish nonsense that you need to grow up and get past, right? It's just giving away so much. Because if adults are not, well, <laughs> let's say conservative leaning adults, if conservative leaning adults are not interested in gaming, Okay, no conservative, you know, leading adults will then be making the games. And if that's the case, who is left to make the games? Who knows that you can influence impressionable minds with the messages you put in media? The left knows that. Seems conservatives just... And what your actions, your take in that video is perfectly encapsulates the criticism we've been having against people like you, who say, just get away from stop letting kids play games. All right? And you wonder why so much of the, uh, you know, platforms, people's groups, companies, whatever, that are making pop culture have been infected by leftists, extreme leftists. Because there are some moderate leftists that hate the woke crap as well. You wonder why that happens. It's attitudes like this. This is why it's happening. All right. No, you need to, if not get into pop culture, respect it. Encourage, pe encourage rightly served people to get into these interests so that they can start making it. And by the way, Again, there are already, thank goodness, game developers and everything that are conserved that don't want the woke nonsense and are making great stuff. Doesn't seem to be as well represented in the AAA uh, development side of things, but that's why it's starting to fail dramatically, and that's a good thing. It's because there are more conservative, traditional-minded people that are making games in the gaming industry that they're still there, that they didn't listen to people like you, Mad, and just disregarded it all as, you know, childish nonsense, right? Thank goodness that we, we have them, because that's one of the big reasons why the woke agenda is failing in gaming. Because we have all these other games that we can just go and play. Like, movies that are coming out. How many movies that are not drowning in woke propaganda that are the big blockbusters? Very, very few. Okay, and as a result, even people that are like on the fence, they're more normies, they don't like it, but they just want to see a movie. It's there, nothing else to pick, so they'll go see it. That's why some of these movies still survive on fumes. That's why Hollywood is still clawing on to survive, even though so many people hate this crap. In gaming, we have so many other, other options. And as a result, these games that are just drowning in woke propaganda have been failing dramatically because we have all these other great options. And smaller studios that are just made by passionate people who love gaming, want to make a good game, and none of this political bullcrap, right? They're making games that are get, seeing wild success. Thank goodness we have them. Thank goodness no one, <laughs> these people did not listen to people like you, Matt, who have been criticizing this community, this practice. It is huge. It is one of the most important industries in the world in terms of normal people interest. Bigger than Hollywood, makes more money than Hollywood, okay? That's the thing that you want people to just stop playing and enjoying because it's childish nonsense, right? You want to give up that to the left? That's insane. So please, uh, I, I hope if you watch this, don't know if you, if, if, but even if he doesn't, everyone who watches this, we need to understand the importance of pop culture and get involved, enjoy it. And then the, then we can guide our kids for it. The reason why I know what games I, you know, good to let my kids enjoy is because I enjoy this stuff. Okay. I watch it beforehand. You know, it's like there was the new Wonka movie. It's like, all right, is there any overt real, you know, big woke messaging in it? Went and watched it. Okay, there's some small little, you know, um, girl being, you know, teaching the guy kind of stuff, but it's nothing overt, nothing that's going to indoctrinate a kid or anything like that, and it's, it's harmless. It wasn't a good movie. But my kids enjoyed it, and they want to watch it, and of course. But then there is crap like they uh, put out on Disney+, Plus where they're saying, you know, these, my pronouns are this, that, trying to teach kids about, uh, you know, there's more than one, two genders, sorry, there's more than two genders, and all that stuff that can be impressionable, and they can start to adopt those things, all right? That I was like, all right, if it has that nonsense in, kids, you're not even going to be going near that, okay? So you need adults to be involved. Parents need to be involved in this stuff. And when kids are raised with, you know, absorbing good pop culture, right, it can be hugely beneficial. 
It was the influence of He-Man, Superman, and Spider-Man that helped encourage me to be a better person growing up with those uh, those heroes as a child. And that's, that's no joke. I've shared this story multiple times. As a child, I wanted to be a superhero because I idolized Superman so much. I wanted to be like him. And if you got superpowers, what do you do? You help other people with them. Great power comes great responsibility. These are the messages that are in children's media. And there's can also be in video games. Really positive stuff. All right? And if parents enjoy and understand this and they see the good video games, it's like, hey, okay, that's the type of stuff all my kids still learn and do. And they can get the good influences because it does make a difference, okay? It does have positive influences. I experienced that in my whole life. But there were people in the past that saying, superheroes, that's just for, you know, nonsense kids. Oh, I enjoyed it as a kid, right? But there are people saying that you should always grow past it. No, I enjoy comic books just as much now because now I want to make my own comic books and I have. Shadow of the Conqueror is the comic book adaptation. Not for kids, this one, but I am making one that's more kid-friendly, right? And it's because I loved that as a kid and I'm making it as an adult. And kids that love video games and enjoy it will then start making them when they're adults and make the good ones for the next generation. Good things with good messages that are wholesome and uplifting, challenging, all the good stuff, right? But dismiss it that no, Gaming causes harm, especially if you're in a, you know, shooting other characters in the game, even if it's like animated violence, right? Is nonsense. Because, like, the other aspect of the criticism of gaming that it's violent leads to violence, leads to violence, actually, it's been debunked. And Matt himself says, you know, I'm not saying it will lead to a shooter, but then he says it does cause harm, okay? No proof of that at all. It's been debunked multiple times, but there's actually positive in things that can come from playing violent video games. Oh, shock horror playing violent video games? The idea that all violence is bad and people shouldn't be violent can only exist in a world where bad people don't use violence to achieve their means. As soon as bad people will to do that, and in our imperfect world, they will always be trying to do that, right? As soon as bad people use violence to achieve their ends, good people need to be able to be ready to use violence to stop them. That's the standard. And it's a masculine standard. This is why there is an association between masculinity and violence. Because men are stronger than women. And the role that, you know, whose job will it fall to? Whose responsibility will it fall to? To try and protect people from bad people in the world? Strong men, more predominantly. Yes, exceptions, but we know the standard, okay? And so men need to be taught to be ready to be violent when good people need to be protected. Okay? And so, people in the past actually understood this. There was a practice. Medieval period. It's one of my um, areas of deep interest. You might have clued onto it if you see what I'm wearing. That um, to prepare young boys for knighthood, they would take them on the hunt. The practice of the medieval hunt was a very important training step that they did to uh, practice art of chivalric combat. But one of the things they also did was actually violence. Getting the boar or animal, all right, skinning them, and they would get the squires and page boys involved in this so they could get used to the sight of blood because they knew that in the future they would need to engage in combat. Now, I'm not saying all knights were good, but of course there are times when good men need to be violent. And being prepared for that so they can act when they need to it's absolutely important because when the time to act comes, the time for preparation ceases. And so one of the real positive things that young boys do need to be strong men in the future to protect their families and society, right, is to be taught when it's appropriate to act in violence to oppose what is wrong. And also being prepared and ready to act violently. This is why martial arts pursuit is very good. But also, guess what? Violent video games can contribute to that, especially violent video games that can not only teach tactics, but the better are when it's good versus evil. There's good guys and bad guys, very clear when it's appropriate to respond to act against something that you see as bad. And so one game is interesting where it's called Counter-Strike. Played that heaps, okay? And it's an active game where it's um, terrorists versus people trying to stop them, okay? Good, clear, good versus bad. And even though people play as terrorists 
They're never ever going to be thinking, this will indoctrinate me to be a terrorist, okay? Just like when you play the bad guys in Cops and Robbers and stuff like that. It instills a very clear understanding of good and bad. And you need to act. Good guys need to act to stop the bad guys. Even act in violence when necessary. And so though these are beneficial games that we've been playing for... I don't know how long in human society where boys have played good guys versus bad guys, role-playing, whatever, because it instills these things in their minds. Gaming is a massive practice of that. Similar practice in so many other pursuits. And to say it's just going to lead to violence and bad things? It's like, no. It's like saying the same thing as watching violent, you know, movies or playing violent kind of games. Good guys versus bad guys leads to violence. No, it actually instills an understanding that bad people who use violence need to be stopped by good people ready to act when the time comes, even with violence when necessary, and they need to be ready to use violence. And so it's the whole Jordan Peterson thing. He works for the Daily Wire. You might have met, heard this message where he talks about that men need to teach themselves to be monsters, but keep it in check, ready to be unleashed when it's necessary. Gaming is a practice that can help teach and encourage that. Violent video games, but all violent video games are bad because it'll lead to harm in some you know, unknown way. When actual, no, this can actually be a healthy expression of masculine aggression, which is neat. Guys need that understanding and it's good for them, okay? To teach them the right. Teach them how to be violent. Um, sorry, to teach them when to, it's appropriate to be violent. And uh, it's a fun pursuit. And so many things are an actual outlet of this understanding that men enjoy role-playing violent actions. This is why we love action movies. This is why we loved heroic epics going all the way back. Why do you think, do you think sport is not a uh, simulation of warfare? It is, most sports are almost a simulation of warfare. Some literally are from weapon engagements like fencing or javelin throwing, a lot of things like that. They're literally practices that come out of warfare, okay? And it's good that men engage in these and pursue them because men should know how to wage war especially when there's bad men wanting to wage war against them you need good men to stop them and so the whole violence is bad trope the thing that it seems like you've been saying Matt that violent video games is bad and will lead to harm and everything strikes me very similar to the feminist narrative that all men are violent and aggressive and it's inherently in them and uh, they need to be taught not to be violent and all that stuff. It's like, you know, you need to save men from their own violence and therefore video, violent video games, save them for that, that'll make them more violent. It's nonsense. It's the same type of logic that feminists have been uh, applying to and uh, aggressively um, criticizing men from the, no, it's actually can be a very positive thing that men engage in violence kind of simulations because men need to be ready to be violent, to stop bad men who use violence. And, as so, and, and wouldn't it be a wonderful world if it wasn't needed? Yeah, I would agree if uh, there was no bad men using violence in the world, but there's not, isn't there? Okay, and so it's things like this that people have an issue with and are calling you out on this, Matt, when you, ha when you have takes like this, right? Uh, uh, criticizing video games, saying it's harmful, and it comes off as very hypocritical and two-faced. And then we come to a practice that you have done, and I've seen pretty consistently done with many Daily Wire, you know, um, representatives, the main talking heads, right? And it's this practice of never admitting fault and then even engaging back in very disingenuous ways. I think uh, Ben Shapiro might have actually um, started this practice in the sense where he was talking about the way you combat the left is to hit back twice as hard as they hit you. And so uh, Daily Wire contributors, yourself, seem to have this practice to always hit back, no matter what. Never admit fault. Never say sorry, okay? And, or, uh, and if someone tries to, uh, you know, give a dig at you, you give a dig back. That can make you look really bad when you take a swing at the wrong person. When the criticism was legitimate, it makes you guys look pig-headed, okay? And even like... The leftist that you try and criticize because the idea that you should never admit fault never bend the knee okay only works if you're actually in the right if you never bend the knee never admit fault when you're actually wrong it looks really bad it undermines your credibility it harms the so-called movement 
and it harms Daily Wire's, um, well, yes, their credibility, but also people's interest in listening to you in the future. Okay? When you're wrong, you should always apologize when you're wrong. I've had two big examples, one this recent one, because D-Day Cobra, Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers, he clipped your video where you said, you know, this these issues have not been getting attention, but they are getting attention now. And he, uh, he paraphrased it or exaggerated in a comical way to give, to more emphasize what it sounded like you were saying, where it sounded like, you know, well, I have the tweet right here. D-Day Cobra says, Matt Walsh is the first person to highlight wokeness in the video game industry, according to Matt Walsh. It's a comical exaggeration to uh, point out that's what it sounded like you were saying when you said, you know, this hasn't been getting attention, but it is getting attention now, which seemed like it's getting attention now thanks to your video. And it wasn't getting attention when this subject is being covered by hundreds, if not thousands of people constantly in the gaming community, something you're very unfamiliar with. But then you responded saying, I love when people just completely invent crap I never said or even came close to saying. You did come close to saying it. It's very clear that you came close to saying it. And then get all mad about the thing they invented in their heads. That is a profoundly disingenuous reframing of what um, Jeremy D-Day Cobra said. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that there wasn't anything that might be worth defending there. But you could have approached it saying, I actually was meaning the mainstream media wasn't giving attention. I appreciate your work, though. Um, uh, let's push back against Sweet Baby and everything like that. And instantly, would have been, if you just addressed it like that. But instead, no, you got to swing back as hard as you can. Hit back twice as hard as when they hit you. And these are, should be your allies. We're trying to fight against the same thing. This woke, propagandistic, communistic crap that's being infected into society, right? So instead, now look, you might say, who's swinging first? Jeremy, I think, is actually responding to a very disingenuous video where you are attacking the gaming community. That video was attacking the gaming community. And there is a problem in mainstream conservatives that are dismissing pop culture. Jeremy D-Day Cobra has been pointing that out. And it seems like not enough people, you are listening. Because then it seems like you guys just double down. Anime is still satanic. They don't even know if that was sarcastic or not, but it, good work at pushing more people away. Because that's the result. That is pushing people who love anime and pop culture away from conservatism, traditional values, and the people trying to fight against the way. You're totally just burning bridges there, okay? Just like you're doing right now. So Jeremy's been trying to call that out. Call, stop this attitude that what now people have been kind of calling conservative ink, right? This snooty, upturned nose attitude that guys like you have towards pop culture when it's so damn important, okay, for the next generation and for, ah, oh, just this culture war that we're all, you know, getting sucked into. And so I understand why he said that. And I look, there were things that were worth calling out in your video that you made on the Daily It wasn't just covering the things, you were still making that backhanded dig and attack at gaming as a whole, all right? But instead of trying to uh, resolve the issue, acknowledge any possible fault, clear it up, you're just like, this is making up crap and is just inventing in his head. And that seems to be a common practice that the Daily Wire has. And look, we see Lauren Chen here saying, no, this is not all good. She's calling you out here. All right. And it's such a bad look. And I had a similar case like this with it. And I like Andrew Clavin. Okay. I think he's probably my favorite guy at the Daily Wire. Um, and he said some very inaccurate things about girls using swords. I practice historical swordsmanship. I am in that community. I study the history heaps and I practice the sword heaps and I've seen girls practice it. And so there were, there were many nuanced things about women's role in warfare and uh, how they're good with the swords and everything. And so of course I made videos addressing it and uh, heaps of people that understand also could see some of the comments that Andrew made were just flat out incorrect. To this day, Andrew has never admitted that he was wrong. And he, he is aware that I made responses to him because my last video addressing Andrew was in response to a comment he received where someone literally names me, my channel, my other channel, Shadowversity, right, about me trying to correct him. And he really shifted the goalposts a lot to try and say, this is what I meant, even though his initial statement did not have that context at all. And not once did he say, I was wrong. Instead, it's like, no, this is what I really meant, kind of trying to almost imply that, you know, people should understand that I could read your mind. No, no, they can't read your mind. 
and the initial statement did not have any of the context. And even the context he was adding still did not actually address some of the main things about what he was saying. And so uh, is this a, is this like a, a policy at the Daily Wire to never admit fault? Because it just makes you guys look like idiots. And you're not idiots, which is frustrating, but it makes you look really bad. Okay? When you could and should be building bridges with other people that are on your side, right? Especially people like with popcorn and stuff, instead of this silly attitude of denigrating interests that you don't think are mature, you know, productive, right? And uh, be like Benny Johnson, right? Right? Who understands the value of pop culture. Right? He doesn't engage in a lot, but he understands the value. Had great good discussions with Benny on Friday Night Tights over on the Nerdorotics channel, okay? Because it is important. And that's the approach you should have. Be like Benny. Matt. Matt Walsh. Be like Benny Johnson, right? And so... The Daily Wire ends up looking really, really bad when they just double, triple down. And it pushes people away. Massively so. And I like, I want to support the Daily Wire, but stuff like this makes you guys look really bad. And I have a feeling, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. This video is going to go out tonight. We'll see how the things, feeling, according to your uh, track record, Matt, that you will not, change it or you will double quadruple down and everything and not a single person will admit fault there's been other people who work for the daily wire that's been commenting on this and making really bad things saying gamers are dumb and childish like it was um where where's his name greg ree where he says one of the reasons mainstream publications don't bring more attention to this issue is how childish and frankly dumb a lot of gamers are on all sides you are a good example of the problem talking to the quartering it seems like idiots great way to just push away such a large community that want to be on your side fight for the same things but you're gonna call gamers like so a lot of gamers are all this right oh my gosh it's a bad look like this is where the daily wire could be doing so much better and have so much more support if they don't if they just stopped constantly shooting themselves in the foot with stupid, immature crap like this. And yes, it is immature. You end up sounding like leftists. Like, Matt, your way of reframing, strawmanning um, the issue, saying, I didn't say any... I, I, you said you didn't even come close to anything that, you know, D.A. Cover was saying. When everyone who's seeing that in context is like, no, you're like, it sounds like you're saying that. But you say, I didn't even come close to it. That's strawmanning. That's disingenuous tactics. That's def that is deflecting from an argument to not engage with it because you're actually wrong. That's the thing we see extreme leftists, the woke mob doing more often. That's their tactics. That's the tactics you're engaging in by just being disingenuous, either strawmanning, and then your reporter, that Greg guy, just absolutely uh, ad hominem attacks against gamers and stuff like that. You know one of the responses that um, these dog crap game journalists had against gamers they're all man children they're sexist man children not worth listening to okay sounds very familiar similar when you call them you know dumb children you're not calling them sexist but they're, like, they're just dumb they're idiots they're man children or whatever like and then dismissing the actual criticism because by ad hominem same tactics that's right don't be like the enemy you're fighting against all right they never admit that they're wrong either they never bend the knee and uh, and apologize sometimes when you're in the right or we're fighting for the right things you do need to admit when you're wrong and you apologize builds bridges shows humility i have not seen that at all from anyone from the daily wire it seems so grow up genuinely and stop burning bridges with people who could support you and are absolutely fighting the same damn fight. Genuinely. My gosh, so the way you could solve all of this by stop doubling down and saying, look, I overreacted. Jeremy, he's from Geeks and Gamers, D-Day Cobra, he's appeared on the Daily Wire and he actually said the same message when he appeared about conservatives need to stop denigrating pop culture. He said that and it's on one of your Daily Wire things, right? He is ready to fight with you. So instead of doubling down to saying, he didn't even come close to what I was saying, right? You reach out to like saying, look, sorry, overreacted. Understand what you're saying. In my video, perhaps it did come across as too negative against gamers. I can see the value in pop culture. I'll try and do better. You would end 
the crap and criticism against the Daily Wire and yourself that easy. It's that simple. It just takes a little bit of humility. Humility. But the track record is you will never do that because you have this mentality you never bend the knee or admit you're wrong against your enemies. It's not your enemy. All right? The gaming community is, doesn't have to be your enemy. You're the one picking that fight. So I expect that there's just going to be double downs and uh, Daily Wire will never admit when they're actually wrong. And, and more videos like what I've been making, people just call you out for your crap because it's a really bad look. Stop it. We want you to stop. If you don't, it's just going to make things worse.